Hey guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. The end of another week, the end of another poll. We've got a very definite win for the Bounty Hunter's Guide, Galaxy Guide 10 for Star Wars Role Playing Game. Now as usual, I'll cover that on the desktop in a wee second. And I'll be back at the end of the video with some other poll related stuff and some other channel related stuff. But before I do that, I'd like to mention my Patreons, who this week have absolutely maxed out their strength of tribute. And I can admit only pride in these titans because they support my channel. Now, if you'd like to join them, and you'd like to see these videos a week early, or you'd just like to help the channel out, or you'd like to become a honest-to-goodness fake laird of Scotland, or one of the other offers we've got, then there's a Patreon in the description down below. If you check that out, it would be very much appreciated. But anyway, let's have a look at Galaxy Guide 10 Bounty Hunters. So, this is Star Wars Galaxy Guide 10 Bounty Hunters which came out for the Star Wars role-playing game, funnily enough, by West End Games in 1994. Now, the Galaxy Guides were fleshing out areas of the Star Wars universe. Sometimes these were based around particular movies, so we had a Galaxy Guide for Return of the Jedi. Sometimes they were just parts of the movies, so we had a Galaxy Guide for Mos Eisley. But this one is fleshing out the career of bounty hunting. It's trying to flesh out so much that you could base your entire campaigns about it. It's opening up the Star Wars role-playing game to a totally different way of playing it. And it does that pretty successfully. But beyond that, bounty hunting is very useful within your standard Rebels vs. Empire role-playing. Because your Rebels will need an excuse for being able to get their weapons onto certain worlds, why their ship has many guns. And taking up a career as a bounty hunter, or at least having bounty hunter licenses so they can carry weaponry around, so they can have a heavily armed ship with a good excuse, is a reasonable thing to do. So having knowledge of how bounty hunters work, players want, games masters will find it very useful as well. But let's have a look at the back cover. Um, Galaxy Guide 10, Bounty Hunters by Rick D. Stewart. To the being who brings me Han Solo, I offer 100,000 credits, so this bounty is now posted by Jabba the Hutt. Boba Fett, Bosk, IG-88. Bounty Hunters, the very mention of a hunter on your trail is enough to make your blood run cold. They're the galaxy's most infamous trackers and will hunt another person halfway across the galaxy if the credits are right. This galaxy guide examines all the facets of the dangerous and possibly most misunderstood group of professionals in the galaxy. Within this volume, players and game masters learn the specifics of bounty hunting, from determining acquisitions to specialised equipment the hunters rely on. This guide provides details on some of the more notable hunters operating the Empire, as well as details for generating bounty hunter player characters, including an introductory adventure. And inside, well, we've got the standard production quality that West End Games did. Um, their artwork's a little cartoony, but I think it really sells Star Wars very well. Um, the books are very readable. They are just black and white, but the production quality is good. There's no extraneous background images which make things hard to read. I believe some of the later books tried that. But these are very easy to pick up, very easy to read, very easy on the eye. So we start off with the introduction which goes through the ethics of the hunt, who profits, time frames, basically setting up what it is about a bounty that will make people hunt it. So how long you're going to have to do it, how much you're going to earn, who's profiting out of it, problem solvers, the challenge, the other side of the story. A short tale, a few paragraphs there, of bounty hunters in operation. Then we've got chapter one, bounty hunting, the profession, and the professionals. Goes through the power of having a name. You know, how bounty hunters live on their reputation. Going through different types, so imperial bounty hunters, including inquisitors to some degree. Because inquisitors hadn't been really just locked down to be Jedi hunters like they seem to be these days. We've got guild bounty hunters. Independent bounty hunters, the bounty hunter creed. People don't have bounties, only acquisitions have bounties. You know, you're not hunting a person, you're hunting an acquisition. Capture by design, kill by necessity. No hunter shall slay another hunter. And we've got the blank Imperial Peacekeeping Certificate. So you can 
add in your uh, character's name and image to have a little printed out bounty hunter license of your own. And we've got one here for Bosk. Um, no hunter shall interfere with another's hunt. In the hunt, one captures or kills, never both. No hunter shall refuse aid to another hunter. It's building out a creed where bounty hunters will work together. Um, that if you are a bounty hunter, you get respect of other bounty hunters far more than other people do. Bounty hunter etiquette. The imperial perspective on how they treat uh, bounty hunters. Obviously, they disdain them to some degree, as we saw in Empire Strikes Back. Then we're on to character creation. So it goes through various templates we've got. We can choose to be an independent bounty hunter, a guild bounty hunter, an imperial bounty hunter. Talk about what it is in the templates and how to specialise them and make your own. How to develop your own template. Um, allocating uh, skills and skill dice, equipping the character and then getting Games Master approval. We've got lots of questions as well. You know, who are you? What kind of bounty hunter? So you're a challenger, a connoisseur, a droid hunter, you're flamboyant, a gentleman hunter, minimalist, perfectionist, a sportsman, a tag teamer, taster of blood, a terrorist or a tinkerer. And then we're going into the business of bounty hunting. You know, how uh, price a bit on people's heads, permit systems, getting a license to hunt, who do you wish to acquire? Um different permits you can get, priorities. Then we've got a few bounties labelled out here with costs, you know, 5,000 credits for safe return of crystalline compounds believed to be in the acquisition's possession. For um, Mazix Cress. Um, right up to a Wookiee here. And then we've got blank ones, so the Games Master can use them as well, photocopy it. And produce for yourself. A word on bounties addressing multiple crimes. Most wanted and locate and detain bounties. So the most common types of bounties you'll be offered. Galactic bounties, you know, wanting people for piracy, obstruction of imperial authority, treason, transportation of restricted items. Regional bounties, so ones that people won't be wanted across the whole of the galaxy, just within a region. So conspiracy, forgery, transportation of stolen goods. Got sectors, so much larger scales than just regional systems, and then local bounties, you know, accomplice to murder, kidnapping, murder itself, smuggling, theft. And then, of course, we've got other imperial bounties, which it details out. Various documents, private postings, how you go acquiring them, posting agencies, whether you get hired by an agency, postings in corporate territories. Obviously labelling out that corporate territories have their own rules, which are similar to the Imperial ones, but slightly different. The Imperial Office of Criminal Investigations. Um, receivers of bounties, all this kind of stuff. And then we're on to the hunt itself. So we're dealt with creating your characters, we're dealt with getting a bounty. Now we're how you do the hunt. So the attitude of the hunt. The SEPI protocol, which is Selection, Evaluation, Preparation, and Implementation. So how you go about your hunt. Modes of operation. So talking about games mastering it. And then we've got player notes as well. Then we've got a section on notable bounty hunters. Now obviously this is going to include some famous names, but some are just made up for this book. So we've got Ternesis Kex. A almost werewolf like hunter. We've got Jodo Cast, the bargain basement Boba Fett. Um, Moxin Tark, who seems to be wearing an Imperial Guardsman outfit. It labels it as a Sun Guard replica armor. Um, I can't really remember what the Sun Guard were. We've got Zookas out of the movies. Yagatone. A nice Rodian, which makes a lot of sense since Rodians kind of hunt by their nature. Sabrin, we've got Bosk, Dengar, Boba Fett himself, Tijiton, Alec and Vika Cern, so a couple, and their ship, the Widowmaker, an Incom Explorer scout ship. We've got an Isumium Hunter, Tantor, 
a very powerful creature. Seven dice strength. We've got IG-88. And a few other droids. Arms, who is a modified Merindata espionage droid. Gassad-43, a rogue armorer droid. Forlom, also out of the movies, a protocol droid who's become a uh, bounty hunter. Less pictures here, just lots of stats for different bounty hunters. Um, Tesla, a human hunter. Revalian, Revalian Dast, a rogue hunter. And then we've got equipment. Now, a lot of this is for taking people down rather than actually killing. So we've got neural inhibitors, we've got ABC scramblers, which are basically electromagnetic pulse weapons for shutting down ships. But we do have different things here. Grenade launchers, energy rifles, hunt suits, wrist lasers, rocket launchers, all the stuff you'd see on Boba Fett. Smash armor, camouflage armor. Reflective body gloves for sneaking around force cages for restraining uh, Jedi. Motion sensor arrays, flares, an armor droid. Bounty hunter, guilt and related industries, agencies, sorry. Um, so talking about what the advantages of being in a guild is. How they can give you access to different equipment. They give you uh, background information beyond what you can do as an individual. They can mediate with clients. Um, protect you if you get dealt and uh, help if you get sold out then the bounty hunter guild can pay for other bounty hunters to help you um, to get revenge so you are protected more repairs reputation being a part of a particular guild what happens if you retire sanctuary and of course training the downsides well you've got contra uh, contracts you've got to pay your dues you can only take certain contracts, you can't poach anybody's uh, bounties, and you've got the different guild laws. And then we've got the section about the guilds themselves. So we've got House Benelex, House Salakatori, um, Trezario, detailing out different people from them, detailing out what it's like. The Skyne Bounty Hunter College, the Slaver Syndicate, which is Zygarians. Zy as I mentioned in Fragments from the Rim, that these books fleshed out the Zygerians long before they got introduced in the Clone Wars. And then we've got a sample adventure. Now, this adventure, I'm not going to go into the details of it. It is pretty interesting in the way it sets it up. Basically, it's a different view at the Star Wars Galaxies, where usually the players are not working from a position of authority at all. As bounty hunters they are. They're working for the powerful people in the galaxy and have that status behind them. They're working with the law behind them. But the adventure itself has a lot of setup. Now adventure background, the problem, principal characters, setting the stage. So we are six pages in to the adventure before we're getting to where the players are getting involved. The rest of the adventure itself is fairly straightforward. Um, there's some nice bits in it. It's presented extremely nicely. Lots of maps here, different ships within it. Lovely encounters, a map of a base here that they're going to be infiltrating. Uh, and different uh, places they'll visit. Loads and loads of maps as they travel around. Palace's base camp, mercenary drop sites. And that leads us up to the end. And the adventure leads to you getting three character points. And we've got an advert for Torg and an advert for the Star Wars Adventure Journal. Now, the Bounty Hunters Galaxy Guide is fantastic for if you're wanting to look at players playing the Star Wars role-playing game in a different way. While it's very easy to get into your rebels fighting the Empire, this is a really interesting way of your character still being interesting without being evil. You can be bounty hunters and working for the Galactic Authorities to bring in criminals, but working on the side of the Empire, because the Empire does represent law and order during its reign. So it can be really interesting to do that, 
and a different way so your players aren't on the run all the time. They can be working inside the law. But, as I said, a lot of the information in here is uh, very useful for your standard Rebels campaign. Because appearing as a bounty hunter can be a very, very useful thing. Getting a bounty hunter license. So, why are you carrying all those guns? Well, I'm a bounty hunter. Makes a lot of sense and a handy thing for players to get. So, there's lots of useful information here. An absolutely great book. So that was Galaxy Guide 10 Bounty Hunters for the Star Wars role-playing game. And that won with absolute dominating. Over a third of all the votes cast were for that. And it won on 35% of the vote. Behind that, some 10% behind, was Rift's Dimension Book 3, Phase World, for the Rift role-playing game, fun enough, on 25%. Just behind that was Middenheim City of Chaos for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay on 22%. And the only way back behind was Priests of the Celestial Sun for Seth Fading Suns on 10%. And the PC booster kit for Dark Conspiracy, which had only 8% of the vote. Now, that's kind of sad. When I put these polls up, sometimes something in the poll catches my eye, and I drag it out to look through. And I prepare to make a video on that, whether it wins or not. And this week, it was the PC booster kit. I really wanted to make a Dark Conspiracy video. And it came way back behind. So... Shows what I know about you guys. You are far more interested in Galaxy Guide 10 Star Wars, which is lovely. I've got a massive amount of Star Wars stuff because it really is good quality. So I've enjoyed making that video nevertheless. But I would have loved to have done P the PC Booster Kit for Dark Conspiracy. Show some Dark Conspiracy love again because it's been a very long time since I've made a video on it. But anyway, as usual, all of those wiped out and we've gone back to a Retro Adventures poll. Now, as I promised a few weeks ago, I'm not going to keep recycling the same old things. I was going to put new things into the poll. But coming up with five new things, which have never been in a poll before in these over two years of polls now, is getting more and more difficult. So I did struggle. And while it would be easy to flesh things out, because I've got a shelf full of Shadowrun stuff, I've got a shelf full of Star Wars stuff, to fill a poll up with those, I don't really put more, one, more than one option for each of those games in. And I was just making a Star Wars video this week, so I didn't even want to put Star Wars in it. So it was a bit of a struggle, but I've managed it. So, first of all, we've got Gentleman's Agreement for Spycraft. Now, I'm guessing this isn't going to do massively well, because Spycraft itself has been in the polls, and we've never made a video on Spycraft. So why one of the adventures, actually it's more of a campaign, would win, I don't know. But we shall see. You have surprised me in the past, and you'll surprise me again in the future. So let's see where that places. We've got Imago for Shadowrun, which is an interesting adventure, especially as part of it is based in Scotland. So it'd be fascinating to see what Shadowrun makes of Scotland. So let's see where that goes. We've got The Dying of Light for WoW and Fantasy Roleplay. Now this is a Hogshead adventure, and in some ways it got a little panned at the time. But I've run it and I had a great fun. It's a really good adventure with... A time scale because a moon is about to crash into a city and you've got to undo the chaos magic to save the city. Some fantastic stuff in there along with a lot of bad puns on British television personalities. Then we've got Secrets for Call of Cthulhu. Now I don't know much about this, I believe it's four linked adventures but it'd be great to have a read through and a look at some wonderful Call of Cthulhu stuff. And finally, we've got the Fiery Trial for Babylon 5. Now, Babylon 5 stuff was all gifted to me, so I'm not that familiar with it. But apparently this is kind of a campaign. It's something you set around other adventures as a framework, much the way the television series did. So in the TV series, you'd have an overarching plot for the season, but some episodes wouldn't deal with that. And that's what apparently the Fiery Trial is about. It's setting up a framework for a year-long storyline. But there'll be other adventures that you'll throw in in the middle. So that seems really interesting, especially if it is hooking into the televisual storytelling of Babylon 5. So if that wins, I'll love to have a look through it. Another channel-related stuff. Well, the uh, Discord channel's very, very quiet at the moment. Um, I don't believe there have been any comments on it in the past week or so. And I'm sorry for that. I pop in to see if anybody's doing anything, but I haven't had much to say. Um, I've been keeping my communication through other sources. Over on the website, well, I've been finishing off The Mandalorian Season 3, and we've got that out of the way. 
and I'm taking a few days off. I'm going to cover the Vader comics because it's been a few months since I've covered those and I'll catch up to date with that. And then we'll have Vision Season 2 stats for the website and reviews of the Young Jedi Adventures. But we're talking about that being the next month or so's work up until Ahsoka comes out, basically. On the books front, well, they're still getting released for patrons. We're up to over 60 books available for patrons now, plus articles from the Retro Magazines ones. So if you sign up as a Laird or Librarian status in the Patreon down below, you can get access to all that. Tons of stuff I've written. If you don't want to become a patron, then the books are available for drive through RPG. Again, I'll put a link up to one of them there, and you can look up my uh, store or whatever they call it on drive through RPG. And as I said, there's about 60 books there now. On other channel related stuff, I think that's it. I think I've been waffling on for ages, as I often do. So, I guess I'd better say bye. And you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.